I've got some new updates in the D.B. Cooper case, so let's get to it. Hey friends, how you doing? Eric Eulis here. Thanks for joining me once again. Now today, I actually do have some updates with respect to this latest surge diving into the mystery of D.B. Cooper. You may recall that in the last video, uh, there was evidence that I pointed to that suggested that D.B. Cooper came from a company called Rem Crew, a company that existed in the 1950s and was then bought out by a series of other companies over the intervening decades between the 50s and nowadays. And that's really important because obviously, if we can identify the specific company that D.B. Cooper worked at, then we have a very good chance of identifying who D.B. Cooper actually was. Now the update is that I have been talking with the president of the current company that owns what was formerly Rem Crew. Now bear in mind, Rem Crew has undergone a several ownership changes over the last 50 to 60 years. But I have talked with the, uh, with the current president uh, about this and he is going to be digging into not only some old footage, some old pictures that they have from that era, but the hope is that there are actually some old documents as well. Now there may not be many documents because of the ownership changes and so forth, but I have been assured that there are plenty of old archive photographs and things of that nature which are really critically important. Also, the other really important development here is that we have identified a specific division, a specific division within the company, a specific part of the company to look into. And this particular division was actually located in Pittsburgh. It wasn't located in Midland, Pennsylvania, which is where most of Rem Crew's work was done, but it was actually located in a Pittsburgh area. And this particular division had about one or 200 employees. So why that's important is obvious because one or 200 employees is a very small universe of people to be looking at. So there's a very, very real chance that D.B. Cooper came from that specific division at Rem Crew, what was formerly Rem Crew, again, back in the 50s into the 60s. So uh, I will keep you up to date as things develop with respect to that, but I have a feeling we're getting very close to, to D.B. Cooper. In fact, I think we're in his backyard at this point. It's just a matter of, you know, fighting through time. You know, obviously there's a lot of years that have gone by and records and documents and things of that nature have been destroyed People have come and gone and, and uh, the companies have changed ownership and things of that nature. So it does make it appreciably more difficult. But the good thing is, is that we do have science working on our side today. Again, it was science ultimately that got me looking at specifically Ram Crew because of this very specific alloy, this titanium and antimony alloy that uh, Rem Crew uh, received a patent for back in the 1950s, which ended up expiring in 1974. So uh, even though time has kind of worked against us in some respects, it's actually helped us out in other respects. I've often said that time is sort of like a double-edged sword when it comes to the D.B. Cooper story. So just wanted to give you a quick update because I know it had been a couple of weeks since I put out the last video and uh, I will keep you up to date as things develop. But I gotta tell you, I'm very excited about this because I think we're getting very close to identifying who the real D.B. Cooper was. All right, folks, that's what I've got for you today. Again, as usual, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to shoot me an email at eric at And until next time, folks, as always, cheers. <laughs>